my name is Lisa Fuller. I'm the First Nations Australian woman. Um, and I'm the author of a book called Ghost Bird that was released in October. Um, Ghost Bird's actually about twin sisters, Stacey and Lainey. Um, they're Aboriginal teens growing up in a small country town in Queensland. Uh, they're very, very different. Stacey's desperate to finish school and get out of town. Lainey very much is getting involved with local politics and local town stuff. And, you know, Stacey does the, she's a bit of a loner. She does the, the schooling stuff and Lainey's doing the naughty stuff that you probably shouldn't do, like sneaking out at night with her boyfriend. But one night uh, Lainey sneaks out and goes missing. And the story revolves around Chase basically trying to figure out what has happened to her twin. And she starts having these really terrible nightmares and, creepy things start happening and she's got to break various uh, social, cultural or spiritual taboos to figure out where her sister is. Yeah. I'm really sorry. I've gotten so out of practice doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I used really to have a really difficult. snappy version. <laughs> I always think it's really difficult because um, I'm the kind of person, if you ever asked me about something I'd done, my brain would just go blank. Um, so like I'm always in awe when anybody manages to say anything about anything that's done because I wouldn't be able to do it. So you did great. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, I did. I did the exact same thing. That blankness is awful. I actually, because um, this is my debut, you know, it's like what, I had no idea that I'd have to practice that spiel. Um, but yeah, so it came out two years prior to coming out in, in 2019 so I definitely feel like I've gotten rusty with my my spiel <laughs> how did it feel having it come out over there um before and having kind of like an extra new release date over here such a time away from one another it's it's definitely strange because I think it's part of writing anyway is you finish the manuscript and then there's years usually between it getting accepted and edited and published. And it felt kind of like it went through the exact same process again. And um, by that point, I've, I've actually got this anxiety about, have I forgotten parts of the story? I don't think I have, but <laughs> it's now, yeah, it's quite a long time since um, I did my last read through. But uh, I've been warned by other writers not to do the read through for another two years at least. Like two years is a really long time and it's been like a wild two years as well. So I, I, I assume that like, as I say, I would forget something five minutes after I've done it. So I can, I can totally get why it would be like a strange experience to do it all over again. Um, so I guess my first question would be what your inspiration was behind Ghost Birds? Uh, it was a little bit of desperation because um, <laughs> I was supposed to be doing um, my master's in creative writing uh, and it was supposed to, well, I was doing, but I was supposed to be writing it about my grandfather. I was going to sit down with him for six weeks and um, spend that time putting together his life story. But right before that all I went down, he, um, we unfortunately lost him. So after my really lovely supervisor gave me time to grieve and spend time with my mob, um, I had to come back to this master's and I gave him four ideas. Um, and of course he picked the one I least wanted to do, which was this story. <laughs> and I was terrified of it because I've always wanted to write about my community um, but it comes with so much responsibility to do it right and so much weight and heaviness with it that every time I've tried to write, it felt like I was doing all this telling and it was coming out really badly and it wasn't doing them justice. But I think too, it was where I was as a writer. I think I've, you know, with the help of my supervisor and my master's, I came along leaps and bounds. Like he taught me so much and helped me improve my craft. And yeah, together we did the first 15,000 words of Ghostbird. So. It's, 
how did you feel writing about your community? Because I imagine it's a really stressful experience. I know if I was writing about something that was that kind of personal and close to me and the people around me, I think I definitely feel the pressure. Was it stressful, more stressful knowing that people around you would read it and knowing they may have opinions on it? Or was it this kind of wanting to do it right that there was the most kind of pressured part of it? Probably a combo of all of that, plus the fact that, um, so culturally, um, it's kind of difficult to talk about without giving you a bit of a lecture, I'm sorry. Um, but it's most okay. Western so- <laughs> so most fine. Western societies, um, including Australia, um, the rights of the individual are what is held up as most important. And that's cool and everything, but that's not how it is in my community and in many First Nations Australian cultures. Um, the rights of the community are paramount. So my responsibility is absolutely to them. And the only thing I really own is my personal experience. But even then, like writing Ghost Bird, even though it's my community, my culture, my spiritual beliefs, I still went back home for six weeks and I sat down with my aunties because the permissions and protocols and making sure you get it right, really, really important with us. Um, so it was was intensely heavy and and scary and but um at the same time trying to write it because I live down in Canberra but I'm from Queensland and I was working in the public service so it was a very non-indigenous atmosphere and my partner's non-indigenous and um none of my family lived down here at the time so I felt like I was really immersed in mainstream Australian culture And luckily I got um, funding, uh, a grant from this really great, uh, it's called the Anne Edgeworth Trust here. And they paid for me to fly home and sit down with my family for six weeks and do the permissions process. But being surrounded by them, it actually meant that the words flowed more easily. And actually my elders were, my aunties, they were so excited for it. And, and my mom's generation and everyone was just talking to me about it and what I was doing. And so they've always, I'm really lucky to, to have that support from them. Um, because to give you an idea, like this is summertime in Queensland. It's 40 to 45 degrees. It's hundred percent humidity. My poor tiny little netbook wouldn't turn on at a certain point. Only two of my family members had a room, a single room each with air con. And when they found out that my netbook wouldn't turn on, you know, my auntie and my uncle, they gave up their rooms to me so I could write at various times. Like, and when you're talking 45 degree heat, yeah, that's a big sacrifice. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't think I've ever experienced anything that hot, but I know when it's got hot here, like I've wanted to be like full surrounded by fans and like an ice cold drink and everything. So <laughs> I can imagine that that's like a pretty um, huge sacrifice. Um, how do they feel about it now that it's out? Have they read it? Did they like it? Um, very few of them have read it, sadly. But the ones who have, and that includes um, the non-Indigenous community members, actually, mostly it's been really positive. It's been really exciting. I think the other, sorry, I went blank then because literally a week or two ago, one of my mum's sisters called her because she'd finally finished it. And she called to, you know, basically say it was really deadly and she liked it. And yeah, so I've had no negative feedback. And they're all very, very honest people. So, and they tell me to my face. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best kind of people though, isn't it? The people that you know, if they say something positive, they they mean it because they would tell you otherwise. I like 100%. those kind of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so why did you choose to kind of write for YA? Did you find that the story just lent itself to that or was it a conscious decision from kind of the start of the writing process that it was going to be like a YA book? 
I actually didn't choose YA because I thought um, well, when I was going through high school, this sort of book never would have been allowed. Um, it, you know, if it had a single swear word in it, there was no hope that, you know, the teachers would, would allow it or the, the, the parents would allow it. Um, and so I, I kind of, and there's pretty serious themes in there, right? So I didn't think it would get accepted. So when I wrote it, I thought it was adult, but it won a prize here and part of the prize was um, getting published. And the publisher was really lovely and they basically said to me, we think it's YA, but we'll leave it up to you. And I'm really lucky. So I was in publishing for seven years before that. So I've got good connections with various writers, um, some of them YA, some of them not, and some of them who've published YA and adult. And after talking with them, I actually chose YA because uh, one, I was told that Sorry, my dog is scratching at the door. Um, <laughs> when I was told that the YA community is really friendly and very like open and, and that has definitely been my experience and I'm very glad that I chose it. But two, I think the book just is actually YA because when I was writing it, I was thinking about my nieces and my cousins and my nephews and that also myself growing up you know having that experience of not finding any books that represented us and it was kind of me wanting to give something that they could look at and go you know be really proud of and say that's our community and because a lot of the times here in Australia there's this prevailing uh narrative that certain sectors like to um continue that we are a problem and you know, it's, it's very, it's either very tragic or it's very negative and never are we portrayed as really 3D people, you know, um, everybody's got problems, everybody's got issues. We're also, you know, very proud. We're survivors. We're very much community focused and I'm very proud of my community. So I wanted to give them that. And also there's a few things in there that I kind of wanted to say to them in my own way about, you know, being strong in who they are and it's okay. Does that mean, sorry, it sounds really sappy. No, that makes total sense. I, yeah, that's a perfect answer. Um, obviously Ghostbird and a lot of YA titles um, tackle quite like difficult subjects. I think they're subjects that sometimes people don't realize are kind of tackled as much as they are in YA. Um, how do you, important do you think it is for kind of young adults to be able to read these stories and kind of meet these difficult kind of situations and things in, in books nowadays? Uh, I'm really glad that people are now letting authors and uh, write these sorts of mature content because the reality is this is what teenagers are dealing with. This is what young adults are dealing with. Um, and I think, you know, as readers, we all know when someone's condescending to us. And we also know when somebody's actually reflecting something that speaks to our experience. And I just, before I actually chose YA, I spoke to the publisher about this very thing because I made it really clear I did not want to dumb this down. I didn't want to. I didn't want to talk down to anyone because I knew it wouldn't have the impact that I hoped. Because the reality is people deal with this, like the teenagers, young adults, they're dealing with this stuff and pretending like it's not happening is just really condescending. Um, you know, I also asked about the swear words because <laughs> we do swear a lot. Um, <laughs> one of my family members makes the joke where we didn't have swear words until um, the British came, but we took to it like ducks to water. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's used more for us, though, as an exclamation. You don't really swear at someone. If yeah. you swear at someone, then it's a problem and it's rude. Um, but little things like that, it talks to the authenticity of somebody's experience. And, yeah, I'm just, I'm just loving how YA is embracing the own voices, um, you know, section, sector, is that what you call it? Because, you know, I love reading about other people's experiences and 
and um, but also I love that people are embracing the experience of my community so yeah I think there's the YA kind of yeah sector age range whatever you call it has come on like so much in recent years um, when it comes to our own voices being kind of published and put out into the world and like it's incredible to see because I like reading about other people's experiences it's why I read because you know like it's one of the best ways to learn about other people and their experiences and to gain empathy and insight into other people's lives and I also think it's really important for everyone to be able to see themselves in books because if you love books and you it's the same with television if you love certain shows and you never see yourself it sucks um i for example i've got um chronic illness problems um and there's a book coming out next month that has a character and the main character has pots but she's um a musketeer wow so it's a fantasy with a main character that has a chronic illness and like I have never felt more seen in my entire life and like that is an experience that everybody in the world deserves to have um so yeah I think it's incredible um I think it's even more important too especially especially younger people because you know you're going through all those questions about who you are and you've got to experiment and explore and find out but also I think it's not just young people who have to deal with that it's throughout our entire lives you know um we're learning we're growing we're figuring out who we are because it's not static yeah. and um part of that is yeah if you feel invisible which I can 100% relate to um it just there's no words for it you 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 don't exist to the rest of the world, essentially, is what they're saying with no representation. Yeah. And it's it's just, I've read a book once with chronic illness rep, and it is that feeling seen. Like, I exist in a world, because I'm obsessed with books and reading them and seeing anything that remotely reflects me even at the age of 27 I'm, I'm not like what they class as a teen reader anymore um but seeing that like and imagining if I'd have seen that when I was younger is like incredible so obviously um ghost bird looks at your own beliefs and um community how difficult was it kind of tackling those and bringing them into a novel was it hard to translate those across it was really difficult uh in part because uh a lot of the times our beliefs get minimized and your know, words like myths and legends get thrown around which i find inappropriate um you know i think i i say to people you know you wouldn't go to a christian and say has that Jesus myth working for you? You wouldn't go to a Buddhist and say, you know, has the Buddha legend working? You know, mm -hmm. um, we don't have to share each other's beliefs and we should be respectful. Um, but yeah, so it was, it's battling almost this historical way of writing about us. Um, and this real fear that I had around um, our beliefs being appropriated in ways that are really not okay, uh, which unfortunately has happened also in the past and unfortunately still happening sometimes um but it's you know I can't control what other people are going to do but this is where I've invested my time and my effort to do it right way with my elders with permissions um but yeah it was so hard because you feel like you're not just writing a story for your family and your community because let's face it the majority of readers are non-indigenous people um but it's also trying to help people understand us a bit better but also maybe hopefully informing them a bit more and I had to kind of to, to finish the book because I have a huge anxiety and perfectionism issues 
I had to kind of just drop it and stop thinking about everybody else and just think about my nieces and nephew reading this, nephews reading this. Um, and, you know, because not all books are for everyone and not everyone will like a book and that's totally cool. And uh, my goal was if my community members liked it, if they didn't want to, you know, lynch me <laughs> after <laughs> I got it in, um, then I was good. <laughs> yeah. So how the next question follows on quite well from that so how important do you think it is for readers other than the you your the blah, 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 can't speak <laughs> readers other than those in your community um to read your book or readers to read books that are from other communities and feature other beliefs do you think that's like an important thing that is happening i i think it's really necessary um if we're going to you know grow together as human right as the human race and um a lot of that involves uh, educating ourselves about each other and you know i'm firmly firm believer in the idea that you no know, freedom till we're all equal and i don't care if that's around your culture your gender your sexuality your learning difference, your, you know, your neurodiversity, you know, we should be educating ourselves as much as possible. And I think fiction um, is honestly the best way that we can go about that because, you know, nonfiction is great. Don't get me wrong. I used to publish nonfiction. I do love it. But fiction to me allows you to live in someone else's skin and it gives you that real empathy and an understanding for somebody else's perspective that you've never experienced. I think part of our problem is we all assume that everybody experiences the way the world we do. It's a default. And only if you're different or other, do you realize just how different you are? I think, you know, things like the own voices and these books that where the protagonists have their own difference and they're, they're really representing people that historically were just unseen and invisible. They're so important and they're necessary for developing empathy and kindness towards each other. Definitely. It's, I'm lucky enough to re run um, a couple of YA book clubs and like I'm a wide reader and I, I often use fiction as a way to kind of drop into a world and then I can further look into that world from that point it gives you that kind of incredible stepping stone um, to kind of then go on to learn more um, but the things that the the kind of individuals in my YA groups know about other people surpasses like anything that me in my 27 years has managed to pull together um they are i mean they they have serious banter and they will they will wind you up and make fun of you no end but they are the most empathetic people i've ever come across and i think it has a lot to do with the books and the things that are coming out into the world at the moment and that makes me hopeful so oh. this whole process like uh getting to speak to students in high school well first of all being invited by teachers and librarians that in itself was a shock enough and was really lovely and they've all been so lovely to talk to but then these students they have these amazing questions things i didn't even think of about you know tastes motivations and what's really going on with laney and i'm like wow I didn't even think of that and just really smart, thoughtful, but really open-minded and open-hearted. And I'm like, I'm, I don't want to put all the work onto the next generation, but they make me very excited and hopeful. <laughs> Definitely. It's that, um, I don't want to put the pressure on you all because we've all got work to do, but also with you lot, it's going to be so much easier and so much more exciting to kind of watch it happen because they're in, they're incredible like 
They blow my mind, honestly. Yeah. I love them. So with Ghost Burn, Ghost Barn, Jesus. I <laughs> it's 8 a.m. <laughs> Give yourself some slack, man. <laughs> So, Ghost Barn, I believe it was set in your hometown? Yeah, so it's our little country town um, of Eidsvold in Queensland. Um, I was wondering what your decision was behind choosing to set it in your hometown. Um, Because I think, did that help you visualise a lot what you were writing with it being set somewhere that you kind of knew so well? It definitely was a massive help and I definitely cheated on a lot of stuff because, you know, I mean, I know there's this argument for and against write what you know, but I'm a big fan of write what you know because, you know, the house the girls live in was one of the houses I lived in as a kid, as well, no, not a kid, as a teenager. Um, but I picked it up and I moved it to another location in the, house, in the town. Um, I know that town intimately too well because it's 500 people and there's nothing else to do but walk around um even in 40 degree (laughs) um but also it comes back to our culture because so we see a lot of our culture sees everything through story and connection everything is connected everything is alive and that town um there's a long history there for us and i've hinted at some of it with some of the characters like may um but some of it I don't go too much into because, um, well, my aunties didn't want me to write real historical events and I didn't feel right making stuff up, but I hinted to a, some common themes that I heard as I grew up. Um, and, you know, we're very much about country and connection to country. And when I say country, it's a word that, it's an Aboriginal English word that it's, it has two very different meanings from standard Australian English than how we use it. And it's very much about a spiritual connection, a connection to place. And it's not even about this idea of you own something or you belong to something. We are a part of country. Country is a part of us. It's not separable. It's inseparable. Yeah. So trying to move it out of that town wouldn't have worked and it wouldn't have been okay from my, from my, a cultural perspective. But that actually makes it really hard because I've talked to, you know, I'm a huge speculative fiction fan, especially fantasy. Um, and I've spoken to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander writers who we all have that same problem. It's connection to our, our country or our island or our home. But then it's that responsibility and you can't make stuff up because you'll get in trouble and people will start conflating our beliefs with actual mythical characters, you know. So... Yeah, it's it's so complicated. I'm actually trying to write fantasy and yeah. How do you how unless like the only thing I can say to my, my fellow writers was unless we pick it up and move it somewhere else entirely and put it on another world and it's very much like our home, but it's not, not in quite. reality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was really long winded. Did that answer the question? Yeah, I can't wait. Um, how is the kind of what you're writing now going? Is it kind of, are you excited for what you're doing at the moment? I've got a few things on the roll at the moment. Um, one of them is my PhD. And I'm at the structural edit phase and it's no longer, you know, the fun phase of just churning out a really terrible first draft. Now I actually have to polish my turd so I'm sorry is turd okay (laughs) yeah turd is fine (laughs) that's pretty much it yeah it's the um, that's the best phrase yeah (laughs) over here it's you can't polish a turd um but that doesn't stop us from trying (laughs) uh I've got other much more swearing ways of saying it but I was trying to clean up my language a bit for you. <laughs> but I think swearing means different things for so many different people like I think my generation and kind of below 
we use it as like emphasis on things yeah um it's not used as like offense or it's not directed at anyone it'll be like rather than saying that's amazing you'll put a word in front of it and it'll be super super amazing that's like yeah. how we use it um but i think as the generations before me may not see it that way they just see like we will wash our mouth out with soap if you so yep. much just say that word <laughs> and i'm like but it's just an exaggeration it's just like emphasis it's it's a motive it's you know doesn't fly <laughs> So but see, this generation has acronyms, which makes it a lot easier to get away with in, um, you know, polite company. <laughs> Definitely. They're like, oh, what does that mean? I'm like, oh, um, I don't know. Um, what the, and I always end up doing the what the, and then they're having to think of a random H word. And I'm like, I've, I've, I've shot myself in the foot. I could have come up with anything. And now I've got to think of a random H word. Um, I think I still like, can't think of one now. My brain goes blank. I'm like, um, yeah, yeah. It's literally go me. with the Americans. Don't they say heck? Yeah. Oh yeah, they say heck. I suppose I should go use that. See, I didn't even think of that. No, I yeah, think I probably consume too much American content. <laughs> I think I've said what the hair before, and I don't know why, but I think I got away with it because my hair's orange. Um, and they just kind of, woo. <laughs> hey, don't ask, don't tell if you don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's it for all the questions. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me. Um, oh, thank you for having me. That's okay. I i adore this oh thank you I, 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 I was very lucky ruth from um old Barn books uh sent the shop some book plates so i've got mine <laughs> oh nice yeah oh she's so lovely ruth um she let me have a go at the design of the book plate and she just was like go for it I'm like, whoa okay yeah let's do this yeah. like ruth, i love ruth Ruth, incredible. She's so lovely. Um, yeah, I have a lot of time for Ruth. Very nice. Yeah, well, I've, I've had what really shocked me, right? Because every writer's experience that I've ever spoken to is you go over to a, another country and you get edited and all this stuff goes on. And it was so easy with Ruth. And anytime there's been any kind of like, a misunderstanding in terms of cultural difference has been really easy. It's just so simple. And actually, I really love what they do with the cover because um, it's gloss here in Australia. Mm. And um, it's the awards. And now it, it's gone back to the basics of um, the designers, this woman called Jo Hunt. And I absolutely love what she's done. And so I was like freaking out. I'm like, please don't change, don't change Joe's design. But she didn't. She put the spot UV on it. And I'm such a, I'm such a book nerd. I'm like, ooh, so pretty. <laughs> like, it's so, I don't know. My lights might pick it up. Yeah, look, it's so. No, I'm, I'm one of those book nerds. Yeah. 